Hello and welcome to this lecture video. In this video, we're going to review this example problem. And then we're also going to talk about the production cost report. Okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to pause this lecture video. And I want you to go through and try this problem. And it goes from this page, page 153, which I'm starting this video on, through the top of page 154 of the next problem. And what it walks you through is calculating out the cost per unit, and then you need to figure out the cost of the units and ending with, and then the cost of the units transferred out. So it's asking you to do it. Figure out the cost of the units and ending with, and the cost of the units that have been transferred out. To do that, you first have to figure out the cost of the uh, cost per, per unit, the average cost per unit, and then multiply that times the units transferred out, and then also times the equivalent for units and ending with. All right, so why don't you go ahead and stop the lecture video and then we'll come back and we'll, we will review it together. Thanks. Okay, hello and welcome back. So this problem involves our Halsey company, which makes small sale books. Right? And during the recent month, they had the following activity with respect to only conversion costs. So this problem is only dealing with conversion costs. They had their work and process beginning 15,000 units, which were 80% complete. And then we also started another 180,000 units into production. We finished and transferred out 175,000 units. These 175,000 sale notes were finished. Okay. We have work in process ending 20,000 sale boats, 30% complete though, with respect to conversion. We are only dealing with conversion costs. We had $24,000 in beginning with conversion. And then we have another $338,000 of conversion costs incurred during the month. So with our numerator, we take our beginning work in process, $24,000, dollars in the numerator, $24,000, plus additional conversion costs incurred during the month, total costs of three sixty-two. dollars Units transferred out are completed one seventy-five, dollars plus equivalent full units in ending with, 20,000 units and ending with 30% complete. The 20,000 times 0.3 gives us 6,000 plus the 175 gives us 181. Then what we could do is go through and calculating out, calculate out our cost per unit. So we could take our $362,000, which is our total cost, divided by our 181, which is our total of units, gives us $2 per unit. To figure out the cost of our ending width, we take our equivalent full units in ending width. We had 20,000 units in ending width, 30% complete, gives us 6,000 equivalent full units, times the cost per unit, which is right here, of $2, 12,000 units is the cost of ending width. The cost of the units transferred out is completed by taking the total number of units completed out and completed, times the cost per unit, $350,000, okay? So the thing about these problems that can get kind of tricky is that you can get confused between cost and units. So one of the things that I encourage you to do when you're solving these problems is to write out the formula and let the formula guide you. And remember, the formula is cost in beginning with plus cost incurred divided by units completed, plus the equivalent full units in any width. That is the formula. Write out the formula and let that guide you when you go through and calculate doing these calculations because they are multi-step calculations and they can get confusing pretty easily, especially when you have units and dollars, and which ones matter and which ones don't. This work and process beginning of units does not matter for what we are trying to do here, okay? So let's go on and talk about the production report, okay? So our production report, or also known as our production cost report. So at the end of each month, we're gonna go through in each department, each processing department, is going to complete this production cost report, okay? So there's three different components to our production cost report. The first one is a unit reconciliation. Okay? 
the second component is our calculation of cost per unit. And then the third component of our production report is a cost reconciliation. All right. So let's walk through this example exercise using our Midwest Refining which is a company that reclaims petroleum products from used motor oil. And so, yeah, this would make sense that they are using process costing because this is similar identical products. So the information is presented to you in a slightly different way with this problem, but it's still the same formula. Right? Remember the formula for calculating the cost per unit. That's the hardest part about these products is calculating the cost per unit. And so let the formula guide you. Write it out. And then that will help you decide what is important and what's not. So we have our units in pro, units in beginning growth of 10,000, and then the, the, they were 60% complete with respect to materials, 50% complete with respect to conversion. Then we had our cost in beginning with materials, and then conversion. We had units started into production of 190,000 units that we started production. We had extra costs, and this is materials, conversion, extra costs during the period, materials, and then conversion, and then we have 20,000 units in ending whip. They are 80% complete with respect to materials, 25% complete with respect to conversion. Okay? So now let's look at the first component of our production report, which is our unit reconciliation. And so what our unit reconciliation does is it accounts for the flow of units through the department. So what we can do is we can say we have our, we're going to calculate our total units to be accounted for. So we're going to look at our units that we have in beginning. So this is the point where I've said before that the number of units in beginning didn't matter. It didn't matter when we were calculating our cost per unit. But when we're doing our unit reconciliation, we do need to know this. So what we want to know with our unit reconciliation is we had 10,000 units to start with. And then we started another new 190,000 units. Okay. So that means we had 200,000 units to be accounted for. Now, the unit reconciliation says, all right, where do those units go? Well, when they're finished, they go to the next department. If they're not finished, they stay in ending with. So what we can do is we can put down a unit reconciliation formula. We can say units beginning with that's units in beginning whip, plus units started equals units transferred, transferred out, or units finished. Okay, units finished, because remember when a unit is finished, it's transferred out, and it won't be transferred out until it's finished. Plus units ending whip. This is our unit reconciliation. Now, when we apply this to this form to this situation, we have those 10,000 units that we that we had beginning with plus another 190,000 units that we started. That gives us these 200,000 units. Now, what the unit reconciliation formula helps us show is where did they go? Well, if we look over here, we had 180,000 units that we transferred out, that's how many we finished, plus 20,000 units in ending with. If when we do our count, this doesn't reconcile, something went wrong. We lost some units, or some, maybe some units were scrapped, something like that. But they weren't transferred out and finished, or, or, or sitting in ending with. So they went somewhere else, and we need to figure that out. 
And that's what the unit reconciliation formula helps us do. Now, on the test, I'm not going to say do an entire production cost report, the unit reconciliation, calculation of cost per unit, and then calculation of total cost, okay? I'm not going to say give me a whole production cost report. But what I could do is give you a test question where I say, here's beginning with, here's units started, here's units in ending with, how many units do they transfer out? And then you just use algebra to solve for that. You say this plus this minus this gives you 180. Okay? That's how I would apply the unit reconciliation formula on a test. So if we continue on and we look at our next page of, 140, of 157, which is our computation of our cost per equivalent unit. Okay? So I'm going to walk you through that down to here, and then I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to finish the, co the cost per unit, because I think you can do that. So what we have over here, if we looked on the prior page, and we have $4,300 in materials, $7,600 for conversion, gives us our total cost of $11,900. We added another $74,100 right there, and then $140,400 for the total cost to be added of $214,500. Add these two together to 26,400, then I can add down like this, 78,4, and then 148. Now, what I want you to do, this is the numerator for calculating the cost per unit for materials. This is the numerator for calculating the cost per unit for conversion. What I want you to do is to stop the lecture video and tell me the denominator for materials and conversion. So remember, the, the denominator is equal to the units transferred out plus the equivalent full units of any whip, and then take that through and calculate the cost per unit with respect to materials and conversion, and then in total. And then we'll check your work. Hello and welcome back. So this is what you should have gotten. Units transferred out, 180,000, 180,000 plus equivalent full units in ending whip. Remember, we have 20,000 units in ending whip. They're 80% complete with respect to materials, 25% complete with respect to conversion. That gives us the 5,000, and then the 16,000. This gives you the total denominator right over here of 196 for materials and 185 for conversion. Then we take our total costs, 78.4, divided by our total units, 0.4, 148 total cost, divided by total units, 0.8, add the two together, $1.20 is our cost per unit. Okay? So on the next page, we do a cost reconciliation. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the lecture video, and I want you to go through and calculate the cost of the units that we transferred out, which would be equal to the number of units transferred out times the cost per unit of $1.20, and then also calculate out the cost of the units in ending work in process. The way you would do that is by multiplying the equivalent full units of ending width with respect to materials times the cost per unit with respect to materials. And then you would multiply the equivalent full units with respect to conversion times the cost per unit with respect to conversion Add those two together, and then that gives you the total cost of the unit. Hello and welcome back. And so in order to get the cost of the units transferred out, we take the number of units times our cost per unit, so you should have gotten 216. In order to figure out the cost of our ending whip, we take our equivalent full units with respect to materials times 0.440 cents per unit, which is the, which is the cost per unit with respect to materials, 16,000 times the 0.4 gives us $6,400. 5,000 equivalent full units with respect to conversion times 80 cents, which gives us 4,000, which is the cost of conversion. 10,400, that gives us our 226,400. Now what we can do is look at our cost reconciliation formula. Cost in beginning with, plus cost incurred. This is the cost of units transferred out, plus the cost of units in ending with. 11,900 beginning with 214 equals the 216 plus the 10,400. Uh, Thank you.